Welcome to Power Electronics Education Electronic Book Tutorial 8 DC AC Converters. This tutorial is presented by Dr. Firuzare. So, in this example, we have a single phase inverter with unipolar modulation, and the switching frequency is 300 hertz. The DC link voltage is 200 volts and output frequency should be 50 Hz. So we have duty cycles for first half cycle that means we have three duty cycles so section A is we have to find the output voltage. So let's start with the number of switching per cycle. So number of switching per cycle is switching frequency divided by output frequency. So in this example is 300 over 50 that's equal to 6. So that means over one cycle we have 6 switchings. So let's start with the first half a cycle. Suppose this is one cycle which is 50 Hertz that means 20 millisecond and half a cycle is 10 millisecond. So in this case because we have three switchings for first half a cycle so we should divide it by 3 so 3 switchings and now the question is that DT cycle is 0.2 that means 20% of this cycle is allocated for output voltage so approximately we can draw the output voltage and this duty cycle is 0.2 or 20 percent and that voltage is 200 volts. So the second duty cycle is 0.6 or 60 percent so it's more wider so this duty cycle is 60 percent and the next one is 20 percent so the question is that because we are going to generate AC voltage we have almost same duty cycle because of symmetry for next three switchings but the output voltage should be negative. So again this switching shows that duty cycle is 20% and here duty cycle is 60% and again this one is 20%. So the output voltage here is minus 200 volts. So the next section is what's the RMS output voltage. Um, we know that if we have a DC voltage, a DC voltage, the magnitude of for example Vm, so the RMS equals to Vm and if we have a pulse with positive and negative with the magnitude of Vm again the RMS is Vm because VRMS equals to root of 1 over T integral of 0 up to T V square DT and because output voltage is constant and because we have V square so that's why it doesn't matter is positive or negative 
So for these two cases we have Vm, but if we have portion of DC voltage, something like this one, and then negative voltage, so in this case the VRMS equals to 1 over T integral so between this point T1 and T2 and between this point T3 and T4 we have output voltage so we can change the limits of integral and the output is Vm square dt plus T3 and T4 Vm square dt and also here we can simplify that in this case if this pulse width is for example alpha 1 and if this pulse width is alpha 1 because of symmetry then we can say that VRMS is Vm root of alpha over pi if alpha is in radian or we can write it in terms of time which can be delta t divided by t over 2 because one half a cycle one half a cycle is t over 2 so if you have more pulses, so we can add together and then divide it by T over 2. So to find the RMS of output voltage, we need to find time intervals. Delta T1 plus delta T2 plus delta T3 which is equal to delta T1 divided by T over 2 so T is basically 20 millisecond because frequency is 50 Hertz so in this case over T over 2 so now we have to find delta T1 so what is switching frequency switching frequency is 300 Hertz and switching cycle is 1 over 300 Hertz now we can find T SW equals to 3.33 millisecond so delta T1 is 20% of duty cycle so 20% is the duty cycle that means 0.2 times of TS which is 3.33 that means approximately 0.666 millisecond and that equals to delta T3 and delta T2 is 60% duty cycle means 0.6 times of 3.33 approximately is 1.98 millisecond so to find the RMS value we just need to put the values the DC voltage is 200 root of Delta T1 is 0.66 plus Delta T2 is 
0.98 millisecond plus delta 3 is 0.66 divided by 10 millisecond which is equal to 200 times of 0.57 and the RMS value for this case is approximately 115 volts so in this section we have to sketch the load current assuming that the inductance value is 1 millihenry and load current the initial value is minus 1 amp so because the DC voltage is 200 volts then we can find the current waveform so switching frequency is 300 Hertz and switching cycle is 1 over switching frequency equals to 3.3 millisecond so we can find this delta T for example delta T1 here delta T1 is 20% means 0.2 times of 3.3 millisecond approximately is 0.66 millisecond and delta T2 is 0.6 times of 3.3 millisecond which is approximately 1.98 millisecond so because the output voltage is DC voltage for this period and then zero and because we have pure inductive load so in general we have this voltage across the inductor so in general the voltage across the inductor is L D I D T or the I D T equals to voltage in this case is output voltage or the voltage across the inductor divided by L or we can simplify delta I divided by delta T is V out divided by L or finally we can say delta I is delta T over L times of V out so we know this switching time we know due to cycle and the time that the switch is on and the time that we have DC voltage across the inductor so we can find delta I for each switching cycle and then we can sketch the load current so here in order to draw the load current for this interval because voltage is zero so because output voltage is zero delta I is almost zero so because load current is minus one amp so the current is almost same but for this interval which is 0.66 millisecond if we look at this equation we can find delta I so delta I in this equation equals to delta T which is 0.66 millisecond times of DC voltage for this case DC voltage is 200 here divided by inductance value which is 1 millihenry 
that equals to approximately 132 amps that means current increased up to 132 amps at the end of this time and again from here to here because the output voltage is zero so delta I is zero that means current is constant and then from here to here because again we have DC voltage for 1.98 millisecond then we increase the current again again from here to here the current is almost constant again we increase the current so from here to here current is constant so now because output voltage is negative so in this case delta I is negative that means we decrease 132 amps again the current is zero we decrease the current again so current is zero and then we decrease the current so in this case we can see that this current is constant when the output voltage is zero but in some applications if you have resistive load so in this case the current is decreased and then increased based on RL which defines the time constant so because each switch conducts for 120 degree that means one third of cycle so here we have six sectors for one cycle that means each switch can conduct for two sectors so we can start with S1 that means gate signal for S1 and because of 120 degree phase shift between the phases so in leg B we can start with 120 degree that means this switch conduct for 120 degrees that means for two sectors and again G5 is for this switch because of 120 degree phase shift between phase B and phase C then we can start drawing the gauge signal for S5 and now we can look at the bottom switches so basically we allocate the first switch for first half a cycle and this switch for second half a cycle so this is not based on traditional switching techniques when the top switch is on the bottom switch should be off because the top switch is on just for portion of first half a cycle so we do the same for second half a cycle that means we have gate signal for here we have gate signal for G2 that means for two sectors and G4 again because of phase shift starts again for two sectors one sector here and the other sector appears here and G6 starts here so in order to find the output voltage for resistive load we need to look at the switching signal and look at the current loops for example when G1 is 1 that means when you have gate signal for this switch so this is on so the current either can pass through RGBT or diet so let's concentrate on this interval first interval so here we have only gate signal for G1 and G4 which means these switches are on and if we have resistive load here we can see that we have just current loop for these two phases so because S5 if you look at here there is no gate signal and S6 there is no gate signal so that's why both switches are off so here we can see that for example phase A leg A VAO in this case is plus VDC over 2 and VBO 
is minus VDC over 2 while VCO is not defined is 0 because this voltage is not connected either through this switch to plus or through this switch to minus and the reason is that we have resistive load that means the current through the resistive load is getting to zero when there is no voltage so now let's look at the second interval here in this case we have a gauge signal for S1 so this switch is on so the current can pass through either IGBT or diode so there is no gauge signal for S3 that means this switch is off S5, S2 that means these two switches are off but we have gate signal for S6 that means this switch is on so again suppose that here if the current is positive or negative again this point VAO is plus VDC over 2 and this point is connected to here that means VCO is minus VDC divided by 2 so again because we just considering resistive load that means when we change the switch in state we change the current also because we haven't stored any energy in inductor because there is not any inductor but definitely here we can see that this point is not connected to either positive or negative so that's why VB of 0 so let's start with inductive load so in this case we can start with first sector here so we have gate signal for S1 we have gate signal for S4 so this switch is on and S4 is on so here again we can write the equation for this leg and this leg that means VAO is plus VDC divided by 2 and VBO is minus VDC divided by 2 what about this leg? so the case is that because we have resistive and inductive load that means when we change the switch in a state that doesn't mean that we can change the current instantly in this case we need to look at the current and based on the current we can define whether the output voltage is positive or negative for example because in this interval there is not any gate signal for S5 and S6 that means no gate signal and these switches are off but the case is that if the current through this leg before switching a state was positive so in this case this diode will conduct and VC VCO will be minus VDC over 2 and that's for if the current is positive the current through this leg but if the current is negative that means if this is the direction of current so in this case this diode is off so the current passes through this diode that means VCO equals to minus VDC divided by 2 that means VCO equals to plus VDC divided by 2 if the current is negative so in this case this voltage is determined by the load current and we have no control on this voltage 